chapter one, what we did was to look at some axioms of equality, and what we'd like to do today is to start looking at some axioms of inequality, all right? So let's write down a few uh, statements, a few of these axioms. Well, let me put in a heading here of axiom of inequality, all right? And let me start out by talking about for every real number, for every A and B and C belong to the set of real numbers, all right? Now, let's see. One of the first axioms that we would like to mention is that exactly one of the following is true. And if I were to talk about the number A and the number B, I think you will agree that we may say that either A is less than B, or A is equal to B, or in fact A is going to be greater than B. And we give this axiom a name, and does anyone remember it, Doug? Comparison axiom. This is our comparison axiom. Very good. Our comparison axiom for inequality. All right? Comparison axiom of inequality. Well, let's see now. There are a number of other axioms that we may look at. Uh, suppose, for example, if A is less than B, and B is less than C, then we can conclude that what is true, Don? A is less than C. Therefore, A is less than C. We may also write this in the other way, that is, if A is greater than B, and B is greater than C, then what must our conclusion be, Peter? A is greater than C. That A is greater than C. And what name have we given this property, this axiom? Does anyone remember, Bill? The transitive axiom. This is our transitive axiom with respect to, again, notice here, with respect to inequality. And we remember that the transitive axiom also held true for the relation of equality. We had two other axioms, if you recall, that held true for equality. What were those? Do you remember? That had to do with equality, Tom? Symmetric. The symmetric property and the reflexive property. Well, which one was which? What, what did the reflexive property say, for example, Tom? said that a number is equal to itself. A is equal to A. And of course here with respect to inequality, A is greater than A is a false statement. Is that right? And also for the reflexive property, if A is equal to B, then we have said that B is equal to A. With respect to inequality, I think you would agree that that too would be false. But of those three relations, we still have the relation of transitivity with respect to inequality. All right? Let's look at, a, uh, at another axiom. Well, if A is less than B, then suppose we were to take some number C and add it to A, I think you will agree that A plus C then is going to be what? Less than B plus C. I think we may also write what? If A is greater than B, then for every real number C, A plus C must then be what? Greater than B plus C. And I think you will give this some name of Richard? Or additive axiom, or let me just call it the addition axiom with respect to inequality. All right? Now, there is an axiom that has to do with multiplication that we have to be a little careful about. And I think you will remember what that looks like. If A is less than B, and C is a real number which is positive, if C is a positive real number, then what can we conclude? A times C, and what now holds true about the relation symbol that we would like to put in here? Does anyone remember that, <coughs> Brenda? It stays the same. It stays the same. If A is less than B and C is positive, then A times C is less than B times C. Similarly, we may write if A is greater than B and C is positive, all right, then what can we say? A times C is still, Bill? It's still greater than B times C. And if we were to call this one number one, let's look then at a second one in which we have if A is less than B and C is negative. All right, this is the case where we have to be a little careful. Then what is our conclusion? But that A times C is, Tim, is, uh, if A is less than B here, then A times C is going to be greater than B times C. And similarly, if A is greater than B and C is negative, right, then A times C must be, Glenn, less than B times C. I think perhaps we could go through a number of numerical examples to make sure that you appreciate this fact. I think you've already done all that in your first year algebra course, and I'm here I'm doing it simply as a review. And we have given this a multiplication 
multiplication axiom with respect to inequality. All right? Now, let's look at a second idea. For example, we were concerned quite recently about solving equations and being able to write equivalent equations. Let's look at a few inequalities and talk about equivalent inequalities, all right? Equivalent inequality and uh, IEF. And let's see what we may say about that. Well, let me take an example. Suppose we had 4 minus 3 times x plus 3 is less than x minus 1. And I think you will agree that we have an, an inequality here, which we would like to ask ourselves, what number, over the set of real numbers, will make this sentence true? Is that right? And I think you will agree that it will probably end up to be an infinite set. Well, let's look at this sentence and see what we can say. I would like to write an equivalent sentence here, Peter. 4 minus 3x 4 minus 3x minus 9, minus 9 is, less than x minus is less than x minus 1. Good. And notice here now that uh, Peter used a distributive property in which he has substituted an equivalent expression. And if you remember, that was one of the same transformations that we could do for equality. And looking at this, who would like to write an equivalent sentence, an equivalent inequality here? Rick? Um, let's rearrange the terms here, perhaps. If 4 minus 9, say, is uh, negative five. a negative 5, minus 3x, minus 3x less, than x minus less than x minus 1. Okay. And now let's look at this inequality. Again, notice here that this is an equivalent expression that we have substituted. And who now would like to write an equivalent uh, inequality here, Doug? Uh, negative 4x. A negative 4x, all right, is less than... Is less than Four. Does everyone agree with this? In which notice here then that, uh, that Doug added or subtracted some polynomial, is that right? Which in this case happens to be x, in which he subtracted x, and also it looked like he added some polynomial, which in this case was the number 5, is that right? And ended up with negative 4x is less than 4. Now, Phil? He can change that to x was greater than negative 1. Very good. And hence, an equivalent inequality will then be x then must be greater than negative 1. Okay? And notice here that the fact that we have divided both sides, that Bill divided both sides through by negative 4, then reverse the sense of the inequality. Is that right? Now, let's look at a second example and see if uh, we can see any other patterns here. Suppose we had 4 minus 3 times all. Let me just make a few changes in the same example that we have here. And let's say that we have a, a, uh, an equation such as this. Well, again, who would like to give us an equivalent sentence? Tim? 4 minus 3x. 4 minus 3x plus 9, plus nine is, greater than is greater than or equal to x plus 1. Good. Now let's see who would like to come up with another sentence, Tom? Negative 3x. Negative 3x. Plus 13 is greater than or equal to x plus 1. What I'd like to do here, if I may, is to add 3x to both sides. All right? And if we were to do so, we would add 3x plus x is 4x. Is that right? And now let's also subtract 1 from both sides from our inequality. And this is certainly, uh, we can do this from our axiom that we've just made. So then we will read this what? We then will have 12 is greater than or equal to 4x. Or, in fact, we may also read statements from right to left, in which we may read this as 4x is less than or equal to 12. And what then is an equivalent sentence for this, Kirby? 3, Three is, greater than or equal to x. is greater than or equal to x. And we probably would prefer to write this in some other pattern or another way. And what would that be, uh, Don? Um, x is less than or equal to Yes, I think we would probably prefer to write it as x is less than or equal to Three. Is that right? Now, again, let's look at each of these examples. In this case, notice here again we made a substitution for an equivalent uh, expression. And let's see, right here we have added or subtracted a polynomial expression. In this case, it happens to be x and also the number 1. And let's see, here we divided through by a positive number, and when we did so, the sense of the inequality stayed the same. Whereas in the first example, when we divide it through by a negative number, the sense of the inequality was reversed. Is that right? And I think that the, the, the analogy with equality is almost identical, except for that one unusual situation 
about dividing or multiplying two by a negative number. Is that right? All right. Well, let's make the graph. Perhaps I didn't leave enough space in here. But let's make a graph, say, of this sentence. X is greater than negative 1. And if this were, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the, to the right, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, say, to the left. And what then would be the graph of this sentence, Don? We have an open dot at negative 1. An open circle, all right, at negative 1. And the line continuing up through the positive. Through the, on the right side, is that right? With a heavy arrow on it to indicate that we want every real number which is greater than negative 1. And of course, if we were then to make the graph of the second example, if this were a 0, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right, and so on, and then 1, 2, 3, say, to the left, and so on here. And what would the graph of this sentence look like, Ken? A uh, closed circle at 3. A closed circle at the number 3. And I hope we all are familiar with these words of open circle and closed circle. If it includes the equalities, in this case, the number 3, it then will uh, be a heavy dot on three, which we are calling a, a closed circle. Yes? And a heavy line to the left. And in this case, it's a heavy line to the left with an arrowhead on it to indicate that this graph goes on forever. All right? Again, I think that these are familiar ideas to you, but I just want to make sure that it is clear. Let's look at another idea. And in this case, let's turn over here to a, a word problem in which we have an electronics company can produce one black and white TV set in 16 minutes and one color set in 24 minutes. If this production is designed to make twice as many black and white sets as color sets, what is the maximum number of each kind that can be produced in eight hours? All right, and here now we have a word problem or a, uh, a situation in which we have an inequality. I think it will probably lead to an inequality. Well, let's look back here. And what can we do? The company can produce, what, one color TV set in 24 minutes and one black and white in 16 minutes, but it's designed to make twice as many black and white sets as color sets. So how many color sets can it make X. at any given time? X. X. All right, let's let, John says, let's let X be the number of color, all right, the color TV sets that it can produce in, a, in an eight-hour period. And therefore, how many black and white sets can it produce, Doug? It can produce 2x as the number of uh, black and white TV sets in 8 hours. All right? Now, if it can produce, say, uh, let's look at the 2x number of them. And in how many minutes can it produce these sets? Hmm? Well, let's look here at the x is the number of uh, color sets that it can produce in eight hours. Now, this is over an eight-hour period, is that right? And how many sets that it can produce uh, in, with respect to minutes? Let's think in terms of minutes. If there are X TV sets, and if it takes 24 minutes to produce one of them, uh, how many of them can it produce in so many minutes? Well, let's talk in terms of minutes, rather. If there are X sets and 24 minutes to produce one, in how many minutes time over the eight hour period can we produce TV sets? Uh, Brenda? 24. We have, I think, 24 times X would be the number of minutes that would be devoted to color TV sets over the eight hour period. Is that right? And then how many minutes would be devoted to the black and white sets over this period, Tom? 16. I think we would have what? Well, if it were 16 times 2X, all right? And this is some number of minutes in the course of the day, and this is so many minutes over the course of a working day. And if we were to add that number of minutes, it can be at most what? Uh, let's then think of this as what? Is it less than or equal to some number which would be, uh, let's write it as, Bill? 480 minutes. Well, OK, let's, again, let's just think of it as 8 times 60, all right, in terms of so many minutes. Well, let's see where this inequality leads us. And here we have, what, 24x plus 32x must be less than or equal to 8 times 60. And let's see, 32 plus 24 is what number? 56x is less than or equal to 8 times 60. What number will divide both sides here? 8 will certainly divide. So we have 7x is less than or equal to 60. x center is less than or equal to 60 over 7. Let's write that. We normally don't write it in this fashion, but since we are interested in a complete TV set, let's see what we have. Our 7 into 60 goes, what? We have uh, 
eight and uh, and four seven. And I think because we are producing PV sets, we're not talking about a part of the set that they are going to produce. So since X must be less than or equal to eight and four seven, how many PV sets of color PV sets can they produce? So it, it would then be eight. Now let's be a little careful here. If we talked about two X would then have to be less than or equal to twice 60 over 7. That would be 120 over 7, wouldn't it? Therefore, let's keep that as 2x would then be less than or equal to. Now, let's think of this in terms of an integer. 7 into 120 would go what? 7 into 12 is 1, and 7 into 50 goes 7 and what? And 1, 7. And here now, the number of black and white sets that can be produced must be less than or equal to 17 and 1, 7. But since we're talking about complete PV sets, how many black and white sets at a maximum can we produce? And uh, you think that it's going to be what? 17. Well, let's check this, and let's see how we may check it. If we can produce, let's see now, 24 minutes times the number of them. In this case, it's going to be the, which one is 24 minutes? That's the color, uh -huh. and that would then be 8. Is that right? And here we would have, what, in 16 minutes, and we can then produce 17 of them. The question is, is this less than or equal to 8 times 60? And let's try to do a little bit of uh, arithmetic here. Let's factor out the number 8, and we have left 24 plus, and 8 divides 16, 2, and 2 times 17 is 34. Is less than or equal to 8 times 60, question mark. 8 will certainly divide both sides of our inequality. Therefore, 24 plus 34 adds up to what? There's 58 is less than or equal to 60, which I think you will agree is true. Therefore, what is our conclusion? Let me come up here and write our conclusion that the company, the company can produce, can produce at most, let's write it that way, at most, what? 8 color sets and what 17 now notice here it jumps to the number 17 rather than 16 black and white uh, sets in eight hours all right in an eight hour day well let's uh, look at our homework assignment for next time and i think that that's all that we need to do for today this will be assignment 